What are the next three bourbons to move on to round two? Let's find out. What's going on everybody? Nathan here with the Everyday Drinker bringing you guys a brand new episode of Bourbon Madness here on the Everyday Drinker channel. Today we are going to be doing three matches. We've already had two bourbons get kicked off of the ring. We've had two bourbons move on to round two. Those bourbons being the Elijah Craig Toasted Barrel and the 1792 Single Barrel. So here's a look at the bracket and the next three challengers that are going to be facing off against each other. First round, we are going to have Henry McKenna tenure going up against Russell's tenure. Then we are going to have the Bardstown Weeded Origin Series against the Benchmark Single Barrel. Then the Evan Williams 1783 going up against the Old Elk Weeded. Now, I have one question for you guys that I want you to leave your answer down in the comments below. I've been contemplating changing out the Old Forester 1910 for the Old Forester 1920 only due to the fact that we have the Barrel Bourbon Batch 34, which is at 114 proof. We don't have another bourbon on the lineup that is around that proof point. So if you guys want to disqualify the Old Forester 1910 and exchange it for the Old Forester 1920 for the bracket, leave your comment down below. But without further ado, let's get into match number one. Match three out of round one is going to be a fun one here. But in the red corner, we have the Russell's Reserve 10-year bottled at 90 proof and aged for 10 years. And in the green corner, we have the Henry McKenna 10-year bottled at 100 proof. We're going to see who the winner is going to be. We're going to start here on our right-hand side. These have been spinny do route around. We don't know which is which, but without further ado, let's get into the nose on this one here on our right. There's some maple syrup coming out of that. Very nice. There's a touch of like an, a, a candied orange zest, like um, uh, uh, the, the, the sugary candy orange uh, slices. That's what I'm getting off of this. Maple syrup and candied orange. There's this oakiness coming out of it. Obviously, there's going to be a, 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 a little bit of an oak coming off of both of these. These are both 10 years old. But this smells sweet. It smells it almost smells wet. It smells like a wet oak branch. But then it also has this like dustiness coming from it as well. Let's get in the nose of this one here. Wow, so different. So warm. This smells... This has this like, um, um, like sweet potato pie almost. It's so warm and sweet. There's cinnamon coming off of there. There's those uh, ginger snap cookies, but then it has this nuttiness to it, this backbone of this wet nut. Wow, this, this smells so warm. Oh, this is a little bit darker and richer. So interesting how different these noses are. But let's get into the palate on this one here. It's light. It has this fruity aspect to it that rounds off on your tongue. It's got this like cher medicinal cherry. But then there's that warm oak that just opens up and brightens it up a little bit past that dark cherry. And I enjoy it a lot. But I want to get into this glass here and see uh, what this bad boy is all about. Wow, that, that coats your mouth like you wouldn't believe. It gives you this oily aspect that goes on the sides of your mouth and on the sides of your tongue. And it's got this tannic, beautiful uh, woodiness to it but it is super sweet. It's got this maple sugar, this maple syrup sugar that is, uh, this is really nice. Oh yeah, that one is fantastic. Wow, they're so vastly different that it's so difficult to choose one that is better. Wow. This one has this espresso, like a warm, freshly pulled espresso with this cream aspect, this like vanilla cream. It's like almost like a, a vanilla macchiato in a way. That is so nice. And I think I'm just gonna have to give the edge to this glass right here, just because of that warm espresso note that I'm getting out of it that I really, really enjoy. So let's find out which bottle is moving on to round number two. The winner goes to the Henry McKenna 10 year. So there you guys have it. Henry McKenna 10 year is moving on to round number two, kicking off the Russell's Reserve 10 year. Now, 
This bottle is leaps and bounds better than the last bottle I had. And I know I was such a hater on these Russell's Reserve 10-year bottles, but guys, if you have a bad Russell's Reserve 10-year bottle, I'm 99% sure it looks like this bottle. If it looks like this bottle with the white band around the bottom compared to the red band, dump this bottle and go pick up a new bottle of the Russell's Reserve 10-year with the red band on it because it is leaps and bounds better than the old Russell's Reserve labels. And this bottle right here was giving this Henry McKenna 10-year a run for its money. All right, everybody, so we have round one match four, and in the black corner, we have the Bardstown Origin Series weeded match built bottled in bomb at least six years old. And in the tan corner, we have the benchmark single barrel bottled at 96 proof. And we don't know the age statement, but this is out of the Buffalo Trace Distillery. And we are going to start here on our left-hand side with this glass here. These have been, as you know, spinny do round and round. We don't know which is which. But here on the left-hand side, let's get into the nose. Okay, so this glass on the left here, it's super sweet. It's got this uh, confectioner sugar blasting through the nose. It's super sweet. It's that one note sweetness that I can almost guarantee I know what this is, but hey, you never know, things could be completely different today from yesterday to tomorrow, you never know. But I have an idea on what I think this bottle is. It's sweet, it, it is so sweet on the nose. Let's get into this glass here. Eh, I could be wrong, I really could, because this one is super sweet on the nose as well. It has a little bit more complexity to the nose though, compared to this one. Like there's this, this the, the confectioner sugar is there, but it has this like malted chocolate on the backbone of it. It's got this like Twizzler aspect to it as well. But let's get into the palette of this guy here in our hand and see what it's all about. Oh yeah, that's complex. It's a thicker coating on your tongue. This one's nice. It's got this brown sugar that wraps around your tongue and that's fading off very, very slowly. The finish is longer. That's really nice. It's got this chocolate aspect, like a rich chocolate ice cream. That's very nice. Followed by a little bit of like an orange zest that's on the back end of that finish that's super, super sweet. But let's get on to this glass over here. That is a birthday cake and a glass, but it's one note. I think I know what that glass is. It's not as complex as this glass over here. This glass over here has so much more going on for it. Whereas this glass is that birthday cake with the uh, confectioner sugar, the royal icing. It's beautiful, but I have to give the edge to the complexity of this glass over here because it's still so beautiful, but it has so much more going on for it. So I think that this is gonna be the Bardstown, but let's find out. This is the Bardstown Origin Series. The Bardstown Origin Series is moving on to round two, kicking off the benchmark single. And here we are with round one, match five, the final match of today's episode. And in the black corner, we have the Evan Williams 1783 small batch bottled at 90 proof. And in the white corner, we have the old elk weeded bourbon bottled at 92 proof. This is gonna be a fun one. This is going to be an absolute fun one. These have been spinny do right around. We don't know which is which. This is one of my absolute favorite bottles of bourbon under $25 that I've spoken so highly about and a lot of you guys have spoken so highly about in the comments. But this one right here, this is one of those first bourbons that I really, really wanted. It was hard to find here in New Jersey. I picked it up down in Dallas, Texas, and it has been one of my absolute favorites to, to pour for people. That is a weeded bourbon. It's a staple as a weeded on my shelf, and I absolutely love it. But we are going to get into these glasses here. The one on the right here, let's see what this one is all about on the nose. This one here has this lemongrass nose that it's, it's sweet, it's earthy, it's inviting, it smells like springtime. But then it has this little cinnamon spice on the back end that just comes into the, your nose and it just says, I'm here. I'm ready to mingle. I'm ready to bring a happy marriage into this glass on the palate. But here on the nose, I'm there, but I'm not the most predominant note. That smells so nice. It really does. It smells like springtime. And springtime is right around the corner. I just cannot wait. But this one, wow. Oh, wow. It's like a freshly brewed cup of coffee. 
it's got this oakiness to it as well on the back end, like a, a, a little bit of a toasted uh, oak, like you're at a campfire or something like that, but you're sipping a nice, this one here is a story, right? You're sitting at a campfire. It's a, a, a warmer day, but you're sitting on the campfire. Maybe you're roasting some hot dogs, but you smell that oak, but you also have a nice freshly brewed cup of joe, and it's just sitting in your hand. You're enjoying it. But then it also, after that dissipates, you go back in there on the nose. It's, it has this strawberry, the strawberry stuff that's over top of cheesecake sometimes. I'm not the biggest fan of strawberries on my cheesecake, but that's what it smells like. And then there's this warm vanilla on the tail end. Nose, I'm gonna have to give it to this one, but this one's nose smells so, so nice. But let's get into the palate. That's what it's all about. We're not just smelling bourbon, we're tasting bourbon to see which one moves on around to. This is one of those bourbons where the nose transfers completely over to the palate, right? There's this, that strawberry candied, whatever that strawberry juice is that goes over top of a New York cheesecake, that's there. There's this coffee-ness that comes through, that's there. There's these oakiness, this toasty oakiness that's there. It's got a little bit of a graham cracker, which is really nice. But let's find out what number two is all about. It's darker, it's richer. It's got a little bit more jamminess to it on the first sip. The nose doesn't fully transfer over to the palate. It still has this lemongrass earthy tones to it, which is really, really pleasant on the finish. It's a little bit longer lasting on the palate. It's making my tongue water a little bit more, making me salivate a little bit more and making me want to go back in for a little bit more on the next sip, which is really nice. Wow. Glass two is darker, it's a little bit more jammy, it makes me wanna chew it. Really, really nice. Whereas this glass on the left, it's warm, it's inviting, it's got this sweetness to it, but the finish isn't as pleasant as this one on the right. Now, it's not. I'm not going to say that this one isn't really nice on the finish, but the finish on the glass on the right here is leaps and bounds better than the glass on the left. So let's find out what this one here is on the right because this is the winner of round one, match five. Let's see. Evan Williams, 1783, has now beaten out and kicked the old elk weeded bourbon to the trenches. So there you guys have it. These are the three winners of today's episode's Bourbon Madness. These three bottles are moving on to round two. We have the Evan Williams 1783 small batch, the Henry McKenna 10 year bottled in bond. And then we also have the Bardstown Weeded Origin bottled in bond bourbon. These three are moving on to round two. Let me know if your bracket is still holding up or if you are just completely out of the game. Here is a look at the bracket moving into Friday's episode with the last three matches of round one to see who moves on to round two. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. This has been Nathan with The Everyday Drinker. Until next time, cheers.